Hello, blessings upon you, all of those of you watching this that will join me here live soon. And those of you who are watching the replay, happy Friday or whatever it, whatever day it is that you tune into this. Oh, thanks for the love. I love it. Burning some sweet grass for us all here. I just realized I need to take a really deep breath. Yes. Blessings. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. So I've been wanting to join or do a live. I've been wanting to talk about just Mercury retrograde, Virgo season. I'm curious if, I'm sure you all are feeling the transition, feeling the energy of Mercury retrograde. My dreams are still in consistent flow of abundance. And it's interesting, I literally have to pick and choose what dreams I write down and what I'm just like, okay, you know, if it is important for me to remember this dream, I trust that the insight, the information, the guidance will be given, you know, in some sort of other way if I don't write it down. But my dreams have been really, really um, crazy, I guess you could say, and very vivid. One of the other things I just shared on my story is that actually the past, I would say two or three months, I'll just be going about my day doing random things and I'll get this like scene that just pops in my in my head like it's like I'm watching it as if it's like I'm watching a movie and I'm always usually in a state of transition or I'm in a car or I'm walking just going somewhere and whatever scene is happening or the environment around me just brings forth this feeling of um, like nostalgic, heavy, heavy nostalgia. And that nostalgia brings forth this really intense euphoric feeling and it feels so good. And it's, there's been a few times where I've kind of teared up in, in the feeling of wanting to be in that place. And so I shared with you all in my story about this experience. And I actually had a few of you respond that you have experienced the same thing as well. So I'm so, I'm just really happy that it's not only me. I didn't think it was only me. While at the same time, I just didn't know how common this is because I've never really had this feeling or this experience. And once I get the scene in my head, I can think about it again. And sorry about that. And I can conjure that euphoric feeling and that nostalgic feeling. So it's like I can conjure the feeling on demand and it feels really, really good. And out of the few times, I want to say it's happened probably maybe a handful of times. Pro there's probably been, been about two times that I was like, okay, that's an actual memory. Like I have a memory of being in San Francisco, like the scenery looked like San Francisco and I'm walking up this, you know, San Francisco has like the massive large hills. And so I'm walking up this hill and I'm on my way to some Japanese restaurant or to get sushi or something. And I'm just in this space of like, I just feel really, really good. And I'm in this foreign place. And just, there's a lot, there's a feeling of exploration and just inspiration in that environment. And that's an actual real memory. I definitely remember um, coming across this, obscure hole in the wall a Japanese place it was like a secret thing and, and we just happened to arrive at the place um at the right time when they were opening because usually they're booked um right away right on spot and so we were able to get in and it was kind of like a secret side door type thing and so that memory coming through that scene coming through really conjured a lot of um emotions and nostalgic feelings for me and yeah it was just a really good time so a lot of you or a few of you shared just your interpretation or your experience on what i've experienced and this morning i actually was meditating and i received some insight on this from my higher self so this morning I was writing down my dreams 
And then right when I got to the last dream that I was writing down to the end of it, one of these scenes popped in my head. And it's funny because I actually can't remember. I have my journal here. But the scene popped in my head. So I wrote down what came forth and what I was feeling. And then I also wrote, okay, so what does this even mean? I'm really curious about this. Is this a memory? Is this a dream? Is this a past life? Like what's happening? And so another ritual of mine that I just begun like two days ago is that as a part of my morning meditation, I sit and close my eyes, take deep breaths and essentially invite Urania and my higher self and we have a meeting, an agreement, and it's a whole thing, which I'll share at some point. Like I said, I just started doing this, so I wanted to wait a little bit longer to share you know, the process. It's really easy and to share my experience with it, but I'll share this. So in this meeting with my higher self, after we discussed what was necessary right at that moment, she just naturally started sharing about this experience that I'm having as far as the, the memory or the scene popping in my head. And essentially, she said that I am gaining insight, I'm gaining access to either the past, so I'm remembering past memories, or and or I'm also gaining access and insight to parallel or alternative realities that are happening simultaneously to this one, right? Sounds kind of crazy. Um, but actually not to me, but maybe to some of you, I don't know. And on top of that, what she said was really important and what the, the message is at this time through what is coming forth within this insight and these memories or the scenes is that I am, when, when the scenes come forth, right, I'm always in a process of a journey and transition and the euphoric feeling, the nostalgic feeling is coming from my environment around me and me being in the journey and anticipating where I'm going. And that is the key essentially is that I am being guided to be present in the moment and enjoy the journey, which I, I've been receiving that message a lot lately, like a lot the past, what, two, three weeks, maybe longer. I mean, I've been hearing that for a long time, but it's been a really dominant message. So that made so much sense. And then she also communicated that the more I connect with my higher self in this very intentional ritual way that I'm doing right now, the more, the clearer the messages will be. And then I will therefore be able to gain insight to future events, right? So it's like I'm always in journey, in the journey of the anticipation of where I'm going and enjoying the moment. And very rarely, unless it's a memory that I actually know it's a memory, I don't know where I'm going. But what I'm sensing from what was given to me through Urania is that I will soon be able to like see where it is I'm going. And that's something that makes a lot of sense because that's something that I have been really desiring strongly for some reason is to not necessarily know the future, but the ability to make clear decisions that are in alignment with my divine purpose, with my higher self. So connecting to the divine intelligence of my higher self so that I can make these decisions that are in alignment with my truth, right? With my purpose. And a big, big part of this is no, is trusting myself, trusting myself, trusting divine and trusting in life. So trust is a big thing. So if you're experiencing this, if you have experienced this, which I know a few of you are, as you reached out to me via my um, story, this is a direct message to you, right? And overall, this is a, a good message in the sense of really honoring the moment and enjoying the journey, because that is really important if we're, you know, you guys already know, like if you focus on the destination, like you're going to miss the fun. And, you know, once we get what we want, sometimes we get it and we're just in our feelings like, oh, did I really want this? Or it's not as good as I thought it was. And we really get that in that euphoric feeling and inspiration by just the flow of the journey right and just being in the moment so enjoy where you are now um so that was really profound i see there are some comments here 
So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap in. My dreams are vivid, Christopher says. Hi, Christopher. I still need to send you my, my chart. My dreams are vivid and different each time too. Mary, hi, Karen. I've had a lot of ton of deja vu experiences. Yeah, and I contribute them to my dreams, but I have vivid memory of said situation. Yeah, so the deja vu, it's interesting because this has been a bit, I always have deja vu experience. This has been a little bit different because I don't know even how to explain the difference. It's just literally a scene comes through and I'm just like, whoa, you know, what is this? And it's like, I long for it. It's like, I want to be there, right? And it's just this feeling, but there's this really peaceful, euphoric feeling. And I was also, let me just, because I made some notes here. Um, let's see. I was also guided to, oh, did I write it down? She also mentioned that the feeling is really important. So by being able to, as I said, recall the memories or recall the scene that's playing forth, that brings me the euphoric feeling, right? Those scenes, if I recall the scene again, then I will feel that feeling again. And this is, in a sense, a way for me to access that frequency of that feeling, that high frequency of joy, bliss happiness that's a that's a way for me to access that you know in a short period if i need to like jump to a higher vibration or if i'm trying to shift my energy um, because when you're in those high feeling vibrational spaces right that's when you're essentially in alignment with the divine and then the decision making is clearer or easier your mind is clear your heart's open and all of that so that's something that I was guided to do. So um, something that also came through too is think positive thoughts, feel positive energy and positive things will happen to you. That was a message that I got in an Oracle yesterday and then it was uh, repeated to me today. So that's so on point. Let's see, I'm gonna also pull some um, cards for the collective to see what messages are coming forth for Virgo season, Mercury retrograde more specifically. Yeah, there's something going on with the, the, the consciousness, right? That's the big thing. I've been really drawn to consciousness. And another message that came through, see all the messages are coming through so clearly and it's like, I gotta write everything down. So something else that came forth too is expanded consciousness, expanding your awareness is your freedom. Right. So if we're closed minded, if our awareness is just like if we have tunnel vision, right, and we're just like, where is this thing? Where am I going? I don't understand what's happening. Then we're missing all of like everything around us. Right. Everything that's already here for us. Right. And so we feel stuck. And I'm saying this because this is literally how I've been feeling off and on for some time now. I've been feeling stuck and stagnant and just wanting things to kind of pick up the pace. Right. And that expanded awareness, that expanded consciousness is our freedom, the inner standing, the inner knowing, right? That's divine intelligence and that is our freedom. So that's something else that came forth. So it definitely makes sense that a lot of us are starting to like just even um, indulge in, you know, topics, subjects, projects that are expanding our consciousness. And I've been really drawn to focusing on that. So Stasia, hello, beautiful. But what about the drama that seemed to disappear upon wake or the dreams? <laughs> I was like, the drama. All right. So what about the dreams that seem to disappear upon waking? So that's a good question. That's when again the element of trust is coming forth where we are being guided to trust that we'll receive that guidance no matter what, right? And this again is why it's important to open our state of awareness, our level of awareness so that we can be in a space of receiving, right? We are connecting with our environments. We are opening up our senses to hear like literally the world around you. So all of these notes that I've had written, just random stuff from like six, seven years ago are starting to pop back up. Like I swear this just popped up on my desk today out of nowhere. 
Like I've been going through old papers, but I don't remember seeing this paper on my desk. But today it was on my desk. And one of the things that stood out to me is, and I'm just going to read this to you all. Um, in this world of duality, shadow defines light. Begin to study your world literally and symbolically and see that your world speaks to you all of the time. Earth is alive and holds the knowledge you seek and your consciousness affects what Earth reveals, right? So if you're open in your state of awareness, if you're open in your consciousness, then you will be in awareness of all of the answers, all of the divine guidance is already here for you, right? So it's all gonna be revealed in divine timing, which that's another, a whole other thing, right? So the information is stored in stone and bone. This made me think about Capricorn. I just felt like Capricorn and Saturn. Saturn holds the records, right? Saturn is essentially that boundary that you could say the gatekeeper into deeper understandings or deeper just, yeah, deeper knowledge, wisdom. Right. And so for some reason with that, with Saturn and Capricorn, and maybe I'm thinking about Pluto and Capricorn made an aspect to, I don't know, let's see what happened with Pluto today. Sorry, I just have to know the astrology or it wasn't today. It was Mars trying Pluto. Right. So Mars and Virgo trying Pluto retrograde in Capricorn on the on yesterday. Yeah, so that's making me think about that. And trying is creative. We'll talk about that in a bit. But yeah, so it made me think about this reveal, like the knowledge. And when I think about even Pluto, it's like the skeletons in the closet, right? Or just things that are just beneath the surface, like deep beneath the surface. But anyways, the not the information is stored in stone and bone. Knowledge of what you seek is being released from storage inside your body. You become your own teacher by acti activating what's inside of you through clear intent and by following the impulses and knowledge that accompany the process. So essentially, while you have these dreams, right, and the fact that once they start to come through and you start paying attention to them, I, the reason why I have been drawn to dream work as of lately is because I want to know what is going on in within my unconscious programming because I feel stuck in some areas of my life and I know that I'm very intentional with the way I live and how I communicate and show up in the world and I still feel some blocks that I just can't really like, you know, move through. And so I'm like, it has to be some sort of unconscious programming and therefore with dreams, that's a, an opportunity to really just gain access to that unconscious energy, right? The unconscious, whatever wants to come up, right? And so we also have the ability to access that information aside from dreams. And so if you don't remember your dreams, that's okay. Trust and also speak the intention or the request to receive that guidance in your waking life, right? that you're ready to receive that. So that would be the way to, um, or that's just, I feel the way I would, or the way I did answer that question about what about dreams that seem to disappear upon waking. So, um, but also if you try to, or not try, cause if you're trying, you're not doing it right. If you set the intention before you go to bed to remember your dreams, then that should be helpful as well. And so that's something I've been doing. And I get so many dreams that I just, <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm not writing down any of this. Like if it's important, remind me later. And some that I just feel a way about, I definitely write those. And some that are really crazy, I'm like, okay, I'm definitely writing that down. Um, but they come through quick. All right. Hi, Mary. I hope you're still here. I'm aware of how my nervous system was mute while being pulled over today by an officer. Ooh, I was so proud of how, how I organically coexistence, how you coexist. Yeah. I'm trying. I got to figure out what this, the symbolism is for crickets because there's a cricket I hear right now and it's very like, I don't know if you all can hear it. It's very profound. And I was hearing a cricket um, 
a few days ago. It could have been last night or the night before, but from my kitchen window. So I'm going to have to look up the symbology for crickets. And again, right, paying attention to the world around you. And yes, it might feel kind of crazy, but, you know, there's there's messages and signs all around us. So, um, but yeah, Mary, I to me, that just feels like you're in a space where you're able to ground yourself and be at peace. And it's like every single thing that's happening in our lives, there's 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 something there, right? There's a teaching, there's some wisdom. I mean, teaching is wisdom, gaining wisdom, right? But there's there's always a lesson or a sign. And that might seem really woo-woo for some people, but I think it's it makes a lot of sense. So, hey, Devin, esoteric butcher, Saturn in Pisces is great for dream work. Yes, and I think that's what's happening, right? Um, at least for me, um, I have my Pisces is in uh, the fifth house of, you know, creativity and such, creative endeavors, passion projects. That's so real. Try not to touch your head before you're able to write it down. Oh, yeah. And another thing. So that's a tip that Mary is sharing about remembering your dreams. Try not to touch your head before you're able to write it down. Swiping your head will archive the dream. Also, if you are, say, if you're in bed and you want to write the dream down, like if you get up, you're like, oh, I want to write this down. You have your journal. I know that, say, if you can't remember, like if you're starting to lose a dream, if you lay back down in your bed the way that you were laying when you had the dream, like the way you were laying when you woke up. If you lay back down in that same position, I have heard that it recalls a dream. I haven't tried it because I just cannot, like I get up and, and go in a different room and have my journaling session. I can't write from sleep because I'm just so moody. I don't feel like it. And I'm just like, no, I might want to go back to sleep. So what a cricket with one leg climbed up yesterday we as humans have a collective consciousness very much like the network of mushrooms and mold in nature called mycelium hopefully i pronounced that right this network and how it connects us is super important research this yes also i'm thinking about trees and the way their roots connect and link up underground that's something else that um kind of like how they like hold each other underneath the earth or underneath the surface of the earth, that feels right. I found its poor, its poor little leg and put on my altar. Oh, that's so sweet. That's like really good blessing and just good, good, good juju, I feel. All right, so I see some stuff coming in. So I wanna talk about Mercury retrograde because this is right on, spot on for Mercury retrograde. And definitely feel free to leave comments and questions. I love the engagement. And so with Mercury retrograde, and really this is the theme, right? This is the vibe for Virgo season, being that Mercury's in Virgo. Mercury is the planetary ruler, or like, as I like to say, planetary guide of Virgo. And it's also exalted in Virgo, meaning that it has like an abundance of resources. Essentially, it's like on this pedestal it is honored in virgo and it's its home so it's like i'm at home and cozy and i have everything i want and i'm honored right i'm celebrated and i'm just in really good vibes so that to me in my perspective brings some strength to mercury retrograde cycle right and <clears throat> what i am picking up and just my perspective and my sense on the energy is that with any any Mercury retrograde cycle, we are being guided to be more inward with any retrograde cycle. But definitely with Mercury, we are being guided to kind of like turn our focus to that inner, you could say inner dialogue or just the inner awareness, right? And this is, of course, specific to the area of life in your birth chart that is ruled by Virgo. If you don't know what that is, that area of life, nine times out of 10, is at the forefront of your mind right now anyways. And what's really important and what I like to look at when I am connecting with the energy of um, these retrogrades, sometimes, and usually I feel most times than not, the retrograde planet will have some sort of connection with another planet three times, right? And so 
That number three is so powerful because it takes really three times to create a pattern, right? Three instances or three three moments, right? Three se sequences. You get what I'm saying? So with that said, Mercury is going to trine Jupiter three times. So usually the Mercury will make this connection, you know, before the retrograde. So when it's usually in its shadow period, then it will make the connection when it's retrograde. And then it will make the connection when it's direct and then it's post shadow, right? So Mercury already trined Jupiter um, before it went retrograde. So I'm going to just give you the date on that just in case, you know, if you're um, a scribe like myself and you like to keep your own records and reflect and go back, that date was... Um, August 9th. So if you can reflect back to August 9th and maybe there was some something coming up for, for you at that time that is kind of has something to do with right now or your Mercury retrograde experience, that'll give you a little bit more insight and, you know, understanding of what you are reflecting on and um, drawing your inner awareness to. So with Mercury trying Jupiter, Mercury is in... Um, Virgo and Jupiter is in Taurus. So we're talking about earth energy here. We're talking about security resources, foundation, creating foundational understanding, building creative energy, just manifesting things in the physical, right? And some sort of structure and container um, that we're working with. And for Taurus, that feels like really like personal security. That feels like worthiness um, self-reliance, our values, um, and there's something else I'm thinking about. Worthiness, values, self-reliance, personal security, and just creating some sort of foundation. I feel that Taurus is really good having the foundation and holding the space in that way, like that very strong, fixed earth energy. And with Virgo, Virgo to me is essentially we're dealing with resources right we're dealing with the physical nature but when i think about virgo i always think of like internal systems and i think really honestly of the body and i think of the ability of virgo when it comes to creating and building um it's more so like let's see what's going on inside the system right let's it's almost like that mercury kind of gemini energy like let's take it all apart right let's see all the different parts and you know, how they're working kind of like isolated and see what is out of balance, like see what's not working. And once we get some insight to what's not working, we can fix that and bring the system back together so everything's in flow. And so a trine, uh, this this connection between um, Mercury, or you could say, let's just think about the signs, right? So the connection between Virgo and Taurus is considered to be a trine, their aspect, their relationship. And trines are creative connections, right? They are harmonious. They are like friendships. They help each other out where, you know, when they need help, right? So it's like Virgo's like, I got you here. Taurus is like, I got you here, right? And so <clears throat> with Mercury retrograde or just Mercury in itself and Jupiter, I am getting just this... What I'm getting essentially is the mind, right? So Mercury, we, we know, deals with like understanding, um, learning, communication, ideas, thoughts, all of that. And with Jupiter, we know Jupiter is right about expansion, but there's an essence about Jupiter that is comprehension, like really understanding, like just getting it, the bigger idea, the broader perspective. And I really like Mercury and Jupiter have sort of like this duality, right? They balance each other in this way where Mercury is turned into the details and the understanding in a logical sense in Jupiter is more so about the bigger picture and understanding from a more connected, higher state of awareness, expanded consciousness type perspective. And so when these two energies are coming together, they are able to support and kind of fill in you know, where the other one can't, right? So it's like, I'm the master of this, I'm the master of this, what is our goal and our intention at this time, right? And then we have Pluto and Capricorn, which it's not making an exact trine to these two, but it's holding the space of that completion of three, 
right? So we can kind of keep that, you know, in the back of our mind too, if you want to. Um, and so this, it really feels like this, this knowing or not knowingness, but this reminder of expanded awareness, expanded consciousness, open consciousness is freedom, right? And so being able to go inward to acquire that knowledge and being able to look outward to acquire that knowledge as well and bringing them together. And that's a whole mind, full mind consciousness that you're operating from, right? And so with Mercury retrograde in Virgo, I really do feel that this is what we are learning. This is what we're reflecting on. And I know this week, the Oracle card that I, I pulled for the week was, um, it, it was dealing with sur surrendering, letting go, right? And surrendering and letting go, I feel just making space um, for, you know, just getting rid of the extra, pro getting rid of the programming that's not really serving us. So Devin, who's a really good astrologer, um, says they create agreements about the physical. Yes, I love that. I love that. That is, and this is interesting because this is a part of the meditation that I'm doing with my higher self. So I learned this, this technique in this book I'm reading or listening to audio book called The Pre Premonition Code. And essentially the technique, the goal is to be able to accurately predict the future. For me, that's that's kind of a bonus. My My goal and intention is to just have clarity of the mind and being able to make clear decisions that are in alignment for my highest and best and of benefit for you know those that i connect with and serve and so the technique essentially is every morning you don't have to do this every morning but i'm doing it every morning until i feel like i don't need to sit in meditation breathe connect then visualize my higher self sitting across from me and essentially the goal is or what i'm doing is I am proposing to my higher self, me as my conscious self, proposing to my higher self that I'm really good, my conscious mind is really good at um, looking at information and kind of rationalizing or seeing what's logical and useful at this time, right? And my higher self skill is the ability to have access to the information that is like, it could be information of the future, just divine intelligence information, just an abundance of information and insights that my conscious mind doesn't have access to, right? So the unconscious or the higher self consciousness brings in the information and all of that. And then the conscious mind has the ability to be like, okay, this is useful. The, like the process of discernment, I guess is what I'm getting with coming from. So I basically make this agreement, form this agreement with my higher self that we're both bring in our skills, our masteries will work together for my set intention. And then we shake on it. And then, you know, so the, today was literally the second day I did it. And this time my higher self had a lot to say, um, not bad stuff, but just giving me some, some guidance. And then also shared about this memory scene thing that I explained about in the beginning. So literally thank you devin because that is that feels like mercury retrograde in virgo and jupiter in taurus so for some reason for me it, it definitely makes sense so that is myself and my higher self creating an agreement about the physical okay um i think that i'm gonna go ahead and start pulling cards to see what messages are coming through. I'm just trying to decide on what deck I want to use. Um, okay. So, so, so. I'm going to start. Oh, I guess I'm starting with my Egyptian deck. I just put, picked this up. So, welcome in, beautiful people. Okay. Oh, I also want to say... With the tarot readings, I am offering, I'll put this in as a pinned comment, but if you want a private mini tarot reading with me for a donation, like a donation-based reading, I am offering that right now. So, 
I'm just going to say that here. I thought I had it already saved in my copy and paste. It just paste it on there and I don't. So, oh, well. Yeah. So if you're listening to this, you're interested in a private mini short tarot reading, like 15 minutes for a donation, like a donation based reading, message me, comment. Um, if you're watching the replay, that opportunity, the offer still stands. So just send me a DM. Okay, so we are going to see what collective messages are coming forth for us for this Mercury retrograde in Virgo. Yeah. For some reason also, I want to note that I believe it's on Sunday, Saturn retrograde in Pisces will be in opposition to the sun in Virgo. That feels like something to do with this like dream consciousness, bringing something or getting a different perspective so that we can bring it into the physical. Um, and this is also the halfway point of Saturn's retrograde cycle, right? So this is the peak of Saturn retrograde cycle, um, Saturn and Pisces. So that's going to be interesting. That'll be a good time to, to probably meditate um, with like a specific intention. Let's see what... Messages do we have for the collective? Thank you. Okay, this is nice. All right, so we got one card here, and this is the Seven of Swords. This right away is reminding me because I've been wanting to just share again the um, the numerology for this year. It's a seven year meaning that there is going to be a focus on spiritual path, on mysteries, on strategy. When I think about the seven, I just really see like I have this visualization of myself walking through like the woods on this journey. It's like a part of me, like I look like the hermit, but I'm also going to encounter a hermit or like a wise person along my journey and I definitely feel that Mercury retrograde in Virgo is this this period of where we're going to connect with this wise person or wise soul or spirit on our journey to gain some some understanding of just where we are in our life right now and where we are moving forward towards and um but also what I was going to say. Yeah, especially with this. Like, so there's the onk right here, like in the middle. And it's almost like just looking at this, it looks like there's like a threshold that we have to get through to get to this onk. That might be the case. Um, but the onk is really showing to me that, yeah, it's like there's the key to life, right? There's a key to eternal life or what that means to you, that deep wisdom, that connection to divine energy It is here there's access to it and we're at this part where in the path where we're so close um and so yeah again that's making me think of the journey of this year and we are in the second half of the year so that also just that resonates so esoteric butcher says that the or full and bright saturn saturn will be really bright and I know, right, as the sun's setting, we'll be able to see Saturn on the eastern horizon and we'll start to see Saturn at night. So um, as they get further apart, I believe. Yeah. So spot on. <sighs> OK, so let's see what additional messages. We have so someone's requesting Karen Fuck seven seven is requesting to go live with me. So let me know why you want to go live with me, and then I'll probably invite you. But that may have been a mistake. Yeah, they just removed the request. Okay, maybe that was a mistake. Oh, I got this card last. Oop. All right, I'm gonna try to get one more, and this is why the number three. Right, this is why I like to pull three cards. I, I like to pull my cards in threes because I can get a clear understanding of, you know, what the pattern is here. Like what I get a clear understanding of the message. 
Um, so we have two. We love at least one more, please and thank you. What message or guidance do you have for us on... Okay, that one went to fall. Okay, cool. I have my new little... I just got this recently. Doesn't it look like a little galaxy? This is blue goldstone. Very cool. Love it. Actually, I'm going to put it right here. Okay. Oh, okay. I hear a plan. I hear a plan. We are playing. We are ready for takeoff. Yes. I Man, I've been ready. Like, what is happening? <laughs> All right. So we got the two of pentacles here. So right away, just picking this up, I'm thinking about Virgo and Taurus as I was speaking about that. I received this card in a personal reading yesterday for myself. And it's really interesting. I need to learn more about the baboon. There's a baboon deity in Egyptian mythology. I believe it's a baboon, right? Yeah. So that is, you know, relevant to the energy of this card. If any of you are familiar with, hi, Sarah, thank you for the love. If you're familiar with this deity, let me know. It's interesting that it's almost like I feel that whenever I see it, I feel that this deity wants to eat the eye of Ra. This is actually the eye of Ra since it's the, the right eye. So that is already drawing my focus, my energy towards um, kind of like you could say what the left, the side of the brain that's like analytical, logical, what is that the right side, right? Right side of the brain. <laughs> And also to the element of power and the power in that knowing, the power in consciousness, right? And those elements of that logical, analytical part of the mind, the conscious mind, right? Um, there's been, I've been talking a lot about, you know, the ego and, you know, every, we all hear the talks about the ego and like the ego's bad, release the ego. And honestly, there's, I don't necessarily feel that. I feel that. Um, there is like, it's better to integrate that and to work with it. Cause we're here on earth. Like why not fucking play? Why not have fun with the material world and explore and create and do those things and really utilize, you know, the mind, the conscious mind as like, you know, as a resource, as support, as a tool, as the worker, as it should be, um, used and, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm feeling with this energy. It's 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 got me focused on the the eye of Ra. And it's almost like this energy or this this pentacle here is almost like even though this isn't a crescent, like a moon crescent, like what the goddesses wear with the solar disc for some reason that I'm I'm getting that that vibe too. And I'm just feeling like this solar energy is what I'm getting with this. Let me know what you guys think. I'm still learning the the hieroglyphs too. So it's to feel the divine energy, like the intuitive energy, and then try to read hieroglyphs. Woo, that is going to like scramble my mind right now. So I'm just being on. It's Thoth. It's Thoth. Oh yeah. Thoth is like the, the god of... of like writing and also the god of magic and mercury right yeah so i'm feeling that too see what you all are saying yes be friends with ego plug it in to serve the greater good absolutely working in conjunction integrating right if we're like shaming and you know pushing away these parts of ourselves then I feel like that's we're kind of blocking ourselves or we're slowing ourselves down. And when we are able to integrate it, then we are like we're just in a state of wholeness. So Devin is are you saying this is this isn't thought, though? Thought is the fal the falcon, right? I should know this. I should remember this. I shouldn't should myself is what I should be. doing. <laughs> okay. Um, so then the third card is the Fool, which a lot of us are familiar with. And this is a new beginning, the journey again. And <laughs> I'm just like enjoying 
the fact that he's walking towards this alligator or crocodile. Welcome in, Virgo. Oh, thank you. Okay, Esoteric Butcher, aka Devin, says, yes, the baboon of Thoth is the monkey mind. Wow, look at that. This is why I love you guys. I love your insights. So this makes sense too, as it's it's eating, or I feel like it's face to face with the eye of Ra, which is, I feel the eye of Ra, that energy, Ra's energy is divine intelligence. Like the what I feel from the sun, where it's, there's no emotion. It just feels like a supercomputer or super intelligence, right? Like a strong aspect of source energy. And so I can see the monkey mind, you know, face to face with the divine, you know, intelligence, the divine mind. And it's like, I want to eat you because that's probably, you know, I want to overpower you when, yeah, that's not how it works. If you deny the ego, you deny yourself. I feel that. So, yeah, and this is the journey, right? This is moving forward into just trying to see... Um, yeah, this, this feels like what I spoke about in the beginning as far as the journey. Also, the Eye of Horus is on this one, right? So we're getting both eyes, Eye of Horus up here. There's a lot going on on this card, so I'm not even going to get into it. Use the ego to build your future and also remember, remember your past. Tahuti, I'm sorry, I'm particular about proper comedic, com comedic names. Tehuti, who's that? Or is that Thoth's? Thoth's proper name? Is that what you're saying? Okay. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to see if there's any, actually, do you all want me to keep using the Egyptian deck or do you want me to do another? I have Rider Waite Smith and I also have my Zen, Zen Buddhist tarot deck. So I like to mix and match decks, but I know you all have been enjoying the Egyptian deck and um, it's a bit of a challenge for me and I'm wanting to learn more of it. Awesome. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks, Stasia. All right. Every time I get the full, I know I'm on the proper path. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes me feel good. I like that. Yeah. And I feel it. I feel that that zero that vibration of zero where you're like everything and no thing, right? You're in this space of like creative potential. So I feel that. Ooh, I'm starting to slow down here a bit. Nicole, welcome in. Finally, you can be here live with me. All right, so I'm gonna pull a few more cards and then I'm probably gonna wrap this up or not probably, I am. But if you're interested in your own private mini donation-based tarot reading, let me know. Message me and we can work that out. Awesome. All right, so nice. The sun on the bottom. Okay. So divine, what... What messages do you have? Additional messages. What messages? The Queen of Swords in this deck has been like... I'm getting that vibe again for myself. Let's see. All right. I'm going to shuffle one more time. If I don't receive from this deck, I'm going to try a different one because got to do stuff in threes. So this is the third shuffle. What guidance? Okay. So, ooh, nice. Okay. I feel like that one wants to fall. Nice. Okay, so two more cards, Nine of Cups and Knight of Swords. All right, so the Nine of Cups 
right away this felt, you know, just thinking about the traditional meaning of nine of cups, it felt like that contentment. And again, that same message of enjoying where you are now and being in the present moment and just finding things in your reality that can that you can be appreciative, appreciative of um, and grateful for. And we have the scarab here. So that is transformation. Um, this gives me like the death energy, right? Um, being in that state. And I love that the Ankh is, you know, very strong and prominent in this card. So there's that that energy of divine, eternal life and just the key to it all, essentially. And then we have another little Ankh down here, too. Okay. Then with the Knight of Swords, this just, to me, it feels simply like moving forward, right? Going forward. And then we have the Swords energy here. So again, that is the energy of the mind, which, oof, I'm starting to lose it over here. I'm going to get some final messages. And then, like, all of a sudden, my energy just went from here to here. <laughs> so I'm going to have to take a walk outside or something after this. Whew. All right, let's see what final messages we have for the collective. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me. Thanks for your comments, your input, your insight. Okay. Okay, what final messages? I'm using my Zen Tarot deck. What final messages do you have for us? Thank you. Oh, nice. I like that. On the floor. Okay. One more, por favor. Okay. What final messages do you have for... Okay, cool. I love... This is why I use multiple decks. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so... We received the very first card that fell on the floor. And I don't know, whenever cards, when I'm shuffling randomly, which I'm always doing, right? Whenever the cards fall on the floor, I feel that, I don't know, it's not that I have to work harder for it, but it's like, it's really emphasizing something, right? And so with this card, we have innocence and there is a little grasshopper and this monk just being in a space of like joy, like the inner child. This is the sun, the sun card in this deck. And so to me, this is again, bringing it back to being in the present moment and enjoying the world around you as the information, the intelligence, the insight, the guidance is all around us and within us. And the next card that we, we received fell on top of the Knight of Swords, right? And so... Um, this is really, yeah, I'll just show you. This is burden, right? So with that falling on the Knight of Swords, and this is just an easy message, is is releasing, letting go, cutting through, moving through the mental burdens, right? And so one of the things that the sayings that I like is that you can't get over, you can't go around. It's like you have to go through, right? So any, and this is one of the things I've been practicing for myself recently, if I'm having like really heavy thoughts and it's like, oh, I shouldn't be thinking about, I shouldn't be thinking this, or it could be just a feeling of doubt or shame. And usually I like push it away and I'm like, nope, I don't wanna think about that. Now I literally give myself permission to think about it. It's like, okay, you want to think about this? You want to have this thought? Then let's have the thought, right? I'm not judging myself, shaming myself on what's coming through because I know that once I show awareness to it, once I sit with it, it's gone. Like it doesn't sit as heavy. And so with this card, it feels like heavy energy sitting on us with, you know, within the way our, our minds process things within our thoughts but then how we communicate, how we receive information as well, releasing the heaviness, releasing just unnecessary energy that's like weighing us down. Um, and one of the ways to do that, right, is it's pointing back to the sun, 
finding that inner joy, finding the bl- that moment, the moments of bliss in your life and looking at the world around you and, you know, taking note of the, the beauty. <clears throat> wow. Can you can you tell that I'm, I'm losing energy here? Christopher says transformation from the physical to electromagnetic spectrum spirit is the most misunderstood transformation. Yes, I feel that. I had something about that too in my notes, if I could even find it, but it's something about frequency. (sighs) I don't have the energy to look. Okay, so. (laughs) Um, The very last card, and this is such a beautiful card to wrap this up with is the fool so we're receiving this message twice this is why i like using multiple decks because we get more and i don't know if this is only me i'm sure this is not only me but you know for others who use multiple decks you tend to get repeated cards in your readings right and so We got the full with the Egyptian deck. That was one of the first three cards coming through. We're receiving the full again. So this to me is also just seeing this one, right? Is taking a risk, taking a leap of faith. And that's an aspect of Jupiter that I did not touch on, right? Um, the ability to just be bold and take a leap of faith. And as I was saying before, trust, trust in yourself, trust in the divine, trust in life and follow what really makes you happy. Hi, Jen. Welcome. Welcome in. I'm just wrapping up here. So yeah, and then I like that now that I'm looking at both of these together, okay, naturally, the fool is usually walking out off of a cliff, not giving a fuck in a blissful space. And so that's, you know, the risk taking, right? The innocence there. And then with this fool, you know, he's walking, you could say he's walking towards the mouth of the crocodile, right? And so <clears throat> not really caring, taking a risk is like, maybe it'll bite me. Maybe it just will be like, oh, you know, he doesn't even mind me. He's not afraid of me. And so I'm just going to go do something else. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but the fool out of all of this, as far as the cards, the fool is a very prominent message. Esoteric Butcher says, Tarot being like, I said what I said. Yes. And with these cards, with the full two, I get that aspect of trust, right? And with the zero, infinite possibilities, right? This is a blank slate for us to create the reality that we so desire. We're at that state again. And with Mercury retrograde, we are in a space where we're in reflection and we're being able to, especially with the Virgo energy, we're able to really see what is keeping us in restriction, see what like closed minded, limited perspectives, thoughts, beliefs are, you know, holding us hostage. As I said before, expanded awareness, open consciousness or expanded consciousness is freedom. So that understanding is is key. Awesome. Jen says, Tara loves to tell me about myself all the damn time. Yes. Yeah, I know. And lately I've been pulling my own cards and I know that I've been in a space of like, I need to know the answers. Like, tell me, like, it's not making sense. One of those moments where you're just getting like synchronous, synchronistic numbers and you're just like, what the fuck does this mean? Um, That's how I've been with my personal readings lately. I'm just like, I don't know what this means. (laughs) Like, it doesn't click because I think I'm looking for something specific and I'm not being patient and... So this is really um, a message for myself is to just, I don't know, be in awareness. I mean, I know. So, well, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for your comments and your perspectives and insights. If you are just tuning in, watch the replay. Also, as I said before, if you're interested in a mini quick tarot reading, for um, a donation. I'm happy to serve you in that way. 
And yeah, I hope that you have a beautiful weekend. I might pop in here on Sunday to talk about the sun or just check in with the energy for the sun in opposition of Jupiter because I'm really curious about that. So yes, I hedge witch 11 says I've taken a break from cards and going within. That's what I need to do because I've been getting really good insight and guidance through meditation. So no more readings from myself for a while. So thank you everyone for joining and I will see you again soon. Have a beautiful weekend.